Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm gonna be working on this server the X3650 model 1 which is a Lenovo slash IBM server and this particular model has six three and a half inch drives and I want to prepare this server to be a storage server and um, have a total of 12 terabytes of storage available in that server. The server comes with a built-in RAID controller and that RAID controller it can only do a maximum of two terabyte drives. Um, I have done videos where I put in another RAID controller and um, well get up to 40 terabytes in a server, 48 maybe even, yeah 48 terabytes of storage. Well I did a video where I showed that you could put 48 terabytes of data in a server like this but I'm just gonna be putting 12 terabytes in it and I'm gonna do it in a RAID 5 so I will only get 10, 9 something out of it, 9.1 probably. So. Um, I'm gonna get so much hate for this video, I'm sure. But before I uh, get that, I also want to show that um, I'm gonna be running ESXi 6.5 on the server, and I'm gonna be running it from this. And this is a um, SSD disk in a PCI Express port, but this uh, SSD disk goes out this way. Um, it has a SATA connector right there. Um, more or less this SSD disk is just getting the power from the PCI Express port which is really smart in this server because there is not really a power output for it I have made a cable for it some time back here I made a custom cable in a video where I uh, made this this is uh, kind of the old connector from a CD-ROM drive for the sound and uh, the IBM servers has that as a power output for something so um, I made it into a well hard drive power there and uh, the Model X connectors right there um, two of them the new one and an old one so I could do that but this is smarter and um, I have a 64 gigabyte um, SSD drive on there focus on that and it's an NGFF drive, so um, and it's from Kingspec. So I'm gonna be putting that in the server, and we're gonna be booting the ESXi from that one, and um, the storage. Yeah, let's get to it. I have six of these very, very amazing Western Digital green drives, each two terabytes, and we're gonna be putting those in. I know how much everybody loves these drives, so um, the least I could do was um, put those in, right? See you in the comment section. So we're gonna be putting this in. In another video I'm gonna be putting some more stuff in, but I think we will, we will keep this video um, on putting this stuff in the server. Uh, this one has to go inside of the server, so that's the only thing that I really have to open it up for so um, well I'll have to do that but before I can mount them I have to mount the drives on these uh, trays here for the, the, this specific server I have four of them here I will um, take some more out I have enough of these so um, I'll be mounting those these brackets I've taken out of or removed from other hard drives this one comes from a 73.4 gigabyte uh, SAS drive, 15,000 RPMs. Um, what I usually do is when I get brackets like this and I remove the screws, I put the screws in and I put a piece of tape on top of them so that the screws are sitting here and don't get lost. So I'll remove the tape here and the screws should be ready to go. The screws in these IBM servers are the Torx security screws. 
there are torques with a little thing in the middle that does that you need to use a special tool and I just got this tool set not long ago from a subscriber um, which I'm definitely gonna try and see if I can if this will do it I do hope so so we have to find the right size it could be that one too big that fits fairly well just want to check that one is too small so it's ah, this one a really nice little set security torques foldable very nice so we will take a hot drive and we will mount it in this bracket or tray And that's one drive ready to go. Okay, I did the rest of them and I went down and I made a label for them. And I'm calling them two terabyte SATA drives and Western Digital Green. So um, just to, um, <laughs> well, you can call it a warning if you want to. So I'm gonna be putting on the labels on the drives. And I'm just gonna be putting them where the label was before like right there so the drives are ready down here and I'm about to shut down the ESXi host up there it has just been running test for a bit and everything has been moved away from it so now it should be ready to be shut down for this the server has been shut off and I've removed all the cables behind of it so I'm just gonna remove this one first and pull the server out um, I needed to come out to put in the SSD drive. Okay, here is the server and it's uh, all the way up to the roof. So it's going to be very hard to film here. But down here is a half height slot. And that's where I'm going to be putting the boot um, thingy. So I'll remove this one. And I'll take that over on the shell here. There. And we'll try and see if we can connect that. I think I found last time that it's a good idea to connect the SATA cable first. Okay, I need both hands for this. Okay, the SATA connector is in. Um, see if I can fit this. There. It should be able to boot from that. Awesome. 64 gigabytes of SSD right there. Awesome. Okay, the server is in. I'm gonna put this one back on because um, it absolutely destroys the airflow because in here there is a switch and the switch is blowing the air this way and well if this thing is not there it will blow the air out and the server will suck it in and well kind of a bad thing so now I need to take out the drives that are in it here we have a 450 gigabyte SAS drive that it was booting on so we shouldn't be using that anymore and there is a 2 terabyte uh, Hitachi drive also going on the shell and then there are some placeholders let's get rid of those and I'll put in the two terabyte drives. One. There we are. I need to connect some cables on the back. Okay, server is blinking here, which means there is power on, but it's still not turned on. So we can turn it on and it uh, makes a lot of noise. So um, I will uh, meet you inside of the BIOS. 
found the bias. So um, let's see what we got here. System device and IO. Down here we have IDE configuration hidden away. And right now it sees a master device and the size is 8 gigabytes. That's not true. I saw this also when I tested it on another server. It uh, tells me that it's 8 gigabytes in here, but it does see uh, about 60 gigabytes, which is probably true when we uh, actually do install the operating system. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that ESXi 6. something is installed on this SSD. So that is probably okay, but well, it has that, so that's good. Let's um, have to check the boot order startup sequence. Right now it's CD-ROM drive, probably okay. Then it's hard drive number zero, okay. So let's keep it at that. I think it's good, so let's let's try this. Save settings, I haven't done any changes, but well, and exit. And we'll see if we can find our way into configuring a RAID on the, on the drives. When booting, it comes and tells me to press Control A to go into the IBM Server RAID Configuration Utility. I just did that, so in a second or two, we'll be able to see um, what the RAID controller sees. Okay, here is the RAID controller, and there is some different stuff. There's something called Disk Utility where it will search through and see what kind of disks it sees. And right now it sees only five disks, which is a bit of a problem because it doesn't see the last one. Arr. Let's see if it, what it sees in here. Uh, scan drives, let's see what that sees. Okay, it seems like there is one, two, three, four, five drives, and it's number of the last one that is missing. And I am so the last one is this one. Let's try and unplug that and put it back in and see if, if it checks it. Didn't do much, did it? Oh, yeah, there it does something. Hmm. I'll try and do a rescan and see if it uh, figured that out. Okay, that didn't help any. So I'm gonna remove drive number five here. Um, I knew that this one was uh, kind of dodgy. Um, I marked it with a star there, uh, that piece of uh, artwork right there, because I knew this hard drive was um, weird. It was the one that I've exchanged many years ago in my QNAP NAS uh, because it's it's acting up weird and I couldn't figure it out. So. But I have another one. I had this Hitachi drive that was in it um, just a while back. I took that out to put the other ones in. So let's put this back in. There. Let's see if it examines that one. It should. It was working just a little bit ago. I'm pretty sure that will work. Yeah. Now we have six drives in there and uh, the last one is the Hitachi drive. Hitachi is a really good drive. They have a good reputation. So uh, let's uh, initialize all these drives. You do that by pressing insert to all of them and um, hitting enter and it wanna tell me that everything is being deleted and I'm okay with that and let's initialize the drives which will prepare them for um, being ready to be put in a RAID. There we are. And now we can create an array here and we have our drives again and we select them by pressing insert on each of them there and they jump over there and we can press enter and we get some different options what we can do on these um, we can choose a rate zero which is just striped it uh, will give us a total of 12 terabytes of data 
rate 5 we lose one for safety which means that we will get 10 terabytes of data we can uh, choose rate 1e e, um, which is a mirror it's kind of a rate 10 i guess oh no rate 10 is here can we press help let's see help that's just a mirror it doesn't say anything about the e uh, okay rate 5 and rate 5 ee e, rate 6 and rate 1 e okay um not very helpful but and rate 6 um that would be two drive safety so that would leave us with eight terabytes of data i'm gonna pick rate 5 and we'll give it a name we'll call it um uh, we don't have to call it anything hard drives and it tells me that I will get 9 terabytes of data out of that. Press enter all the way down. Stripe size. Enter to say that that's done. And now it's creating the array. Array is available immediately, but the array performance will be affected during the auto sync process. This process will be running for quite a while on the system. I can start use the storage right away, but it will be slower until it's done with this. So any press any key to continue. Cool. And we're done in here. So we can go back out. Exit utility. Yes. And it was gonna be shutting down. And I'll boot the system and see if it uh, boots ESXi 6. Point, uh, whatever is on here. This was actually no problem whatsoever. It booted very nicely off the SSD without me doing anything further. And um, as you can see here, this is a ESXi 6.0. So that is that is going to be reinstalled. Right now it has 24 gigabytes of memory and it has these two CPUs. Uh, the network is not right, but it's going to be reinstalled so it doesn't really matter. So as I mentioned in another video, the plan with this server is that it's going to be the maintenance server of my uh, setup here, the my Playhouse Patreon sandbox thing, where my plan is that um, Patreons can get a little sandbox virtual machine to play around with, and now they have 9 terabytes of data on that. Um, the plan is that everybody gets their new machine on this one, and then um they move down to this machine and down to this machine and i'll add servers as as it grow and i'll just keep updating these servers i can see myself putting in some new cpus at some point and uh, already has some more ram for them that's going to be the next video um first green drive has already died didn't even um, yeah you just saw that didn't die i had it on the shelf i had marked it because I thought this is probably not the good one. I also put it in in the last slot so that I knew which one it was. So that one, I was predicting that one. But I wanted to give it this chance. If you want to be a bigger part of this, um, join me over at Patreon for one dollar a month and you will know when something happens over there. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.